Finding a software development job, resume tips for getting the interview. Now let's be real, getting your foot in the door for a software development in this market can be tough. The first hurdle, your resume. That's what we're gonna focus on today. If your resume isn't solid, you'll never get the interview. So stick with me and by the end of this video, you'll know how to craft a killer resume that gets you noticed and gets you in front of a hiring manager and gets you one step closer to that dream job. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer Thomason, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps, as well as to build custom software solutions. I do a lot of work as a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. All right, let's dive right into it. Finding a software development job. Let's get those resume tips going. So to start off, you've probably heard that this a million times, but trust me, it's crucial. Keep your resume short. Two pages, absolutely max. And if you're junior, less than that. If your resume is longer than that, you're already losing people. Hiring managers are busy, so they're sifting through dozens, if not hundreds of resumes. And they don't want a novel. They want quick, clear, and concise. And if they don't find what they need in two pages, you'd be out. And I'd say for most juniors, if they can't find it in the first page, you'd definitely be out. So we get it. You've done a lot of work. You've been really hard at work. But your resume isn't your life story. Keep it short. Keep it sweet. Focus on the jobs and projects that matter most to the jobs you're applying for. And remember, if your kindergarten finger painting skills aren't relevant, they don't belong on your resume. The goal here is to keep everything tight, focused, and relevant to the job at hand. Now, get to the tech and skip the fluff. No one's hiring you because of your excellent communication skills or your ability to work well with others. That stuff is nice, but you're going to have to show that in the interview. It's secondary. What they really care about is whether you can do the job. So when listing your experience, focus on the technical. Make sure every job description highlights the languages, frameworks, and tools you used. If you're a JavaScript ninja, then let them know. If you crushed it with AWS, scream it from the rooftops. Technology first, remove the fluff. Now, this goes without saying, but every job doesn't need to be on your resume, especially if you've been around for as long as I have. You don't need to list that high school job where you were flipping burgers. Stick to the roles that are relevant to software development. If that's all you have is previous jobs, then you're going to have to list those. But make sure you can try to stick to relevant jobs. Employers don't care about the odd jobs you had unless they're directly contribute to your technical skills. Every word on the resume should have a purpose. So cut the irrelevant stuff. Less is more when it comes to resumes. Now, you want to make it stand out, but stay professional. Here's where you can get creative. Do anything you can to make your resume stand out, but don't get too carried away. You want a resume that catches attention while staying professional. Maybe it's the design, maybe it's a clever line about a project. Just remember first impressions matter and your resume is your first impression. Bold but professional, that's the sweet spot. If your company isn't working like a well-oiled machine, make sure to reach out here because we can help you fix that. Our specialty here at Startup Pack is connecting systems to help your company run like a well-oiled machine. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer today and let's get synced up. Now, a great way to stand out on a developer resume is to show off your projects. It's not just about your job experience, it's also about what you've built. Have a great portfolio or a GitHub repository? Link it. Employers want to see that you not only have the skills, but that you've applied them in real world scenarios. Make sure the project you list showcases a variety of skills and technologies. Let your work speak for itself. Now next, you want to highlight achievements, not tasks. When writing about your previous job, focus on the achievements, not just on what responsibilities you had. Instead of saying, responsible for writing code, say something like, developed a scalable web app that improved user engagement by 30%. See the difference? One is generic and the other shows results. Employers want to know what you have accomplished, not just what you did. Numbers and metrics, totally throw those in there. They're your best friend. Now, this might sound like a pain, but trust me, it works. Tailor your resume for each job application can make a huge difference. If you're applying for a front-end role, make sure your resume highlights things like React or Angular and CSS. Applying for a back-end position? Focus on your API and database expertise. The more relevant your resume feels to the job, the better chance of landing an interview. Don't send out a one-size-fits-all resume. Customize every single one. Now, here's another pro tip. Many companies use application tracking systems, or ATS, to filter out resumes before the human ever even sees them. If your resume doesn't have the right keywords, it may never even make it to the hiring manager. So grab those keywords from the job description and weave them naturally into your resume. Make it easy for ATS to pick you out from the crowd, especially with the technical keywords. Now, if your business is struggling to connect the dots between the different systems, let us help you out here at Startup Pack. Our specialty is connecting systems to streamline your operations. So visit startuphack.com slash Spencer today to learn more. Let's talk about the skill section that which should likely be toward the top of your resume. This is where you highlight the language, frameworks, tools, and platforms you know. But here's the thing. Don't just list everything under the sun. Be strategic. Only 
include the technologies that you're actually proficient in. If you've dabbled in Ruby once or twice, it doesn't belong on your resume. Now in general, Ruby probably shouldn't be on your resume anyways, but that's my opinion. Your skill section should be a snapshot of strong abilities, not a wish list. Now, what goes along with that is you've gotta be honest. Honesty is key. If you exaggerate your skills or experience, one, it's gonna be super obvious, but two, it's gonna come back to bite you in the interview. If you claim to be an expert on something and then fumble in the interview, that's a really quick way to get kicked out and be done. Be real about what you know and what you've done. It's better to be honest about your current level than to try to fake it. Employers will appreciate your authenticity and your willingness to learn. Now, I know, I know, cover letter sounds old fashioned, but don't underestimate their power. A well-crafted cover letter can give you the edge over other applicants. It's your chance to show off your personality, explain why you're a great fit for the role, and give context to your resume. It doesn't need to be long, just a quick snapshot of who you are and why you're passionate about the job. Bonus points if you personalize it for each application. Now, a lot of new resume and applications are having you do an elevator pitch, which is more of like a single paragraph cover letter. So get that thing really to pop. Now here's another tip that a lot of developers overlook. Keep updating your resume. Don't wait until the job hunt to make updates. Every time you finish a project or learn a new skill, add it to your resume. That way when the time comes to apply, you're not scrambling to remember what you did six months ago. An up-to-date resume means you're always ready for the next big opportunity. The other thing about this is I had an old coworker who used to say that on other bad days, they would go and update their resume and it always made him feel better. And I've actually done this a couple of times and it actually really does help. But it's good to update your resume frequently even if you're not looking for a job. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think that I've missed some? Make sure you leave a comment down below and make sure to like and subscribe. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps, as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. So reach out because we'd love to help. Hit us up at startuphack.com Spencer. Otherwise, hit the links down below and we'll check you next time.